Hello, this is Yanis from Money Repair. Today we will go through a notebook repair, a notebook uh, HP 15 that came to our lab dead. Let's go and see how we will diagnose and how we will do this uh, repair. This is the board on our desk. We will uh, plug with uh, the right tip, of course. Let me find it. Okay, this is the tip. Uh, we'll plug our charger, our power supply unit, and as you can see, we have no consumption, no white light. HP needs a white light on uh, the charger port in order to work, and uh, we have nothing on it. So we are going to check with our voltmeter. What is happening uh, on the circuit? We are having a voltage input. Let's go and see. Nineteen point thirty five thirty seven volts, which is good. This is the voltage on the current sensing resistor. But uh, we are having no consumption in uh, on the board. So nothing is uh, happening. 3.3 uh, volt LDO is not uh, present, I think, because uh, no white light is present uh, on the charger although 19 volts uh, are going on the current sensing resistor let's go and see what else we can find as there are no schematics for this board we have uh, checked around the super io and uh, we have uh, determined that it is uh, an any 9022Q, which is a common Super IO IC, and uh, a lot of boards using this Super IO, uh, boards that we are already having the schematics for them. So we will use another uh, schematic diagram for any chip to check this Super IO if it is working properly or not. We can see that uh, we are having two filters, two coils that are feeding this uh, Super IO. This, uh, the one is for ground and the other is uh, for power supply. When I'm trying to focus better in order for you to see better I have already removed this coil and you can see that we are having zero volt around it there's no voltage uh, feeding the super io so it is normal not having the white light on charger for hp we are going to check in another schematic that contains the ene 9022q super io what are the l10 and l11 coils are doing so we're going and see that uh, we are having two coils that are feeding the IC with ground and three volts. So we're gonna find the three volt coil that is feeding the super IO and uh, 
check something around it. Okay, here is the coil that is feeding the ENE chip, and uh, we can see that uh, we are having directly on it very low resistance to ground 1.8 ohms, which is not good, and that's why we will uh, inject some voltage in order to check uh, what is sorting it is obvious that uh, super io is sorting the circuit but uh, we want some proofs we will feed our custom disk jack which uh, we are soldering right now with uh, two or three volts and we will check with our thermal camera what is getting hot let's inject some voltage 2.4 and uh, 1 amp this is uh, totally sorted so let's go and see with our thermal camera what is getting hot and This is obvious, the Super IO is burning. So, Super IO is the culprit and must be removed. So, let's go back and uh, resolder the coil that is feeding the 3.3 volts to the Super IO. That's good. Could be better. That's okay. Now it's good. It's good. Mm -hmm. So we will use our uh, hot air gun and a tweezer in order to remove the super IO. Let's go. Now we're going very, very quickly in order to remove the Super IO and don't waste your time. Hit gun. We will mind about the components around the Super IO. We haven't disturb anything that's good now we will add some uh, flux and we will use our soldering iron to remove and flatten the pads in order to solder a new super io that is not burned we're running our soldering iron across all the pads of the Super IO in order to be nice and flat and since all this process is done we will try and find a Super IO that must be aligned this is it. We must uh, align it uh, correctly. After that, we will go quickly and solder this uh, Super IO on its rightful position. We will mind that the uh, little dot is the one. The big dot, it is not a one, it is easy to do a fault. We are pressing down the Super IO in order to do our job easier. When, uh, when we will run 
the soldering pen around it. We are cleaning a bit in order to see any bridges. Of course there are. And we are here to undone, to undo these bridges. We will destroy these bridges. We don't want any communication between the legs of the Super I.O. Only the Super I.O. with the pad must be communicated, so any bridges must be not present in the area. We're inspecting, we are hitting, we are reflowing, whatever we can do in order to have uh, proper connections between the pads and the pins. And after uh, we are very satisfied with our work, we will go and see what uh, we have accomplished. These bridges are making my life miserable right now, but it's okay. I will skip the part of uh, undoing the bridging. And so we have uh, soldered at last the Super IO. And now we will check for the notebook if it is working or not. We are plugging, we have a, a white light, which is good. We have uh, the 3.3 volts LDO on the Super IO and uh, we are pressing the power button very low consumption 34, only 34 milliamps which is not good now we will do something about the Super IO we will use our programmer in order to program the Super IO on board that's uh, very good news, uh, because uh, this uh, ENE chip is programmable. So, we have already connected our programmer. Our programmer will recognize if it is soldered the right way, the Super I.O. And uh, the Super I.O. We will be programmed using an easy BIOS that is 128K and we will hit the right and our programmer will start programming the chip we'll erase it first make a blank check we will write the firmware and verify the firmware. And after this job is done, we will go and uh, unplug our programmer. Its job is done, and we will see if uh, we have uh, something new on this board when we will uh, press the power button. Let's reveal our power supply camera, plug the charger. And we must press the power button, which is there. And we are having, having consumption. It's a good consumption. The Super IO 
knows its work now after it's programmed. It is consuming uh, a good amount of uh, amps. So we are thinking that we are good to go and we will have a full test. We have already plugged the motherboard on its chassis and we will do the same thing. We will power on the notebook in order to see if we are having a display or not. This is the main thing, the display to come in order to fulfill all the requirements. We are pressing the button and carefully Here's the display. I think the problem is solved. We're good to go. That was the repair as you saw. If you like this video, consider like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. See you in another repair. Bye.